start we were quite excited at that time i request i request all the participant to please go on the mute please only only do, only dr gopal will unmute uh, his uh, device and he will speak the rest participant please go on the mute please uh, yes sir yes sir continue sir yes dr gopal it still it still it is the uh, red disturbances okay so uh, i hope that uh, you all are uh, safe and fine and uh, when this uh, the season of, of webinar has started we all as an as an speaker were uh, quite excited but uh, i must confess to you people that i am missing you meeting all of you in in the in the familiar uh, ambience of uh, wood apple uh, taking all these pictures and all those all those good old days but uh, obstetrics can't be stopped so the so the learning must go on so there is this uh, topic of diagnosis and management of rpoc where we will uh, deal with the guidelines and what we actually do in our practice so uh, a scope of uh, this talk is brief uh, review of the existing literatures to discuss the uh, imaging findings role of uh, uh imaging findings in diagnosis and management of rpoc pitfalls and uh, differentials practical algorithm for diagnosis and management among conflicting literature so what is this rpoc so by by definition rpoc is the placental and or fetal tissue that remains in the uterus after a spontaneous to pregnancy loss that is miscarriage planned uh, pregnancy termination or preterm or term delivery so this is the definition but before but we should also know few of the facts that rpoc occurs when the when the uh, placental or red trophoblastic tissue remains in the uterus after delivery or a miscarriage rpoc occurs most frequently after first and second the uh, trimester delivery or termination of the pregnancy and after term uh, delivery rpoc is more common after a, a a vaginal delivery than after a cesarean section so it is not so uncommon we still see it in our practice so before going to the rpoc we should first deal with the abortions so in case of uh, threatened threatened abortions service may be closed and there is a live intrauterine gestation in the many cases the uh, ultrasound will be either completely normal or with a just small subchorionic hemorrhage but there are few features that are that are suggestive of a poor outcome but i must tell you that these are just suggestive they might not be that much definitive like the uh, of fetal bradycardia when it is less than 80 to 90 beats per minute it is a poor prognostic indicator but in many of the cases when the patient has got a viral transient illness we have seen this kind of embryos coming out to be a normal baby a small mean gestation sac diameter with poor interval growth large and calcified yolk sac of more than 7 mm this this has the latest of the papers goes against it and they say that that there may be a larger yolk sac that lead to a normal pregnancy a small or irregular gestation sac that is mean sac diameter or crl less than 5 mm large sub chorionic hemorrhage more than 2/3 of the gestation sac expanded amniotic sign and the uh, abnormally large amniotic cavity or absent or poor decidual reaction but the most important thing that you must note is the poor interval growth ideally a gestation sac should grow 1 mm per day so if so you must ask the patient 
for the last ultrasound and if you find that the, there is an interval poor growth then you should counsel the patient accordingly that there's the chances of pregnancy failure because we, we used to see in our practice that every time you send it for a scan the patient uh, comes out to be a 5 days 2 weeks pregnancy then 5 weeks 4 days pregnancy 5 weeks 5 days pregnancy without the the calculation of the interval growth so this leads to the confusion as well as problems in the counseling of the patient threatened miscarriage can go to 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 become the either normal pregnancy in 50 percent of the cases so half of these signs may lead to the normal pregnancy but they might go into the inevitable miscarriages incomplete miscarriages complete miscarriages and missed miscarriages here we must uh, we must discuss the uh, any any Please mute yourself. Dr. Tanvi, Dr. Tanvi Agarwal, please mute your phone. So, oh, we must discuss any abortion that is the presence of an open internal cause. In the first uh, trimester of the of the pregnancy. Second sign is most often the conception the products are not expelled and intra cervical contents are present at the time of examination, and we may find a gestation sac which is very low within the uterus, and there is a progressive migration of the same which is uh, seen on the serial scan if these three signs are present most likely we are dealing with the inevitable abortion it leads to an uh, inevitable miscarriage if the cervical dilatation occurs once the tissue has passed through the cervical os this will then be termed as an incomplete miscarriages and ultimately a complete miscarriages leading to retained product of the conception in cases of the incomplete miscarriages. So oh, coming to the diagnosis and management of RPOC, which is actually very, very confusing. It is con this, this is confusing just because of the two facts that there, there are inconclusive and contradictory guidelines. And second is, there is wide spectrum of imaging findings. So as we will scroll through the, the guidelines, then we have seen, like in this paper lately published in 2014 in Journal of Ultrasound, they have found that the uh, endometrial vascularity and uh, hypoechoic material is the best predictor of RPOC, but they were not sure and they have asked for more prospective studies. Again, in this paper published in 2015, they have uh, dealt with the value of postpartum ultrasound for the diagnosis of retained product of conception. Here also, they have found that the thickened endometrial eco-complex and the intracavitary mass is suspective of RPOC and a color Doppler ultrasound can be used to visualize the hypervascularization of RPOC. But at the same time, they have concluded that all these findings are neither conclusive nor specific and do not need to be present in every case of RPOC. And one of these papers published in as late as 2017 in uh, Vienna, Austria, that has made all the earlier concepts went to the toss after this paper when they have published that there was no correlation with, between the volume size and vascularity to the presence of RPOC and different method of measuring the RPOC did not contribute to the management in our study. So, so all these are very confusing. So we have to make our own practical guidelines and we need to follow it our practice. Similarly, there are wide spectrum of uh, imaging findings as well and we must be correlated these imaging findings in the, in the 
given clinical perspective if we are not following the clinical perspective either we are over diagnosing rpoc or we are under diagnosing the rpoc so in good uh monday morning if you see this kind of picture on your tas and you do a tbs in a patient who had the medical abortion you are very much sure that that this is a case of rpoc but when you see this kind of picture on tbs you are quite suspected of rpoc but when you put the color doppler and you see that that the vascularity is everywhere except this mass so so oh this is not the case of rpoc and it turned out ultimately to be a polyp similarly in this case we are this this appearance is more of the polyp but when i saw the earlier scan just before the pregnancy there was no polyp and actually it turned out to be a small rpoc so it has it has to be mandated to see all the previous papers as well as see the clinical uh, clinical perspective in this we we were neither seeing the thickened endometrial eco complex or the intra cavitary mass just a small vascularity but the patient was bleeding bleeding continuously and this was a small, very very small rpoc just because we are seeing the the vascularity here and patient had treatment and she has recovered finally so in this case we are tempted to say that it is an rpoc but when we put the color doctor we are seeing that there is not any vascularity and it turned out to be a blood clot similarly in this patient in which i saw this finding postpartum when there was a a, a hyperechoic material more calcified extending beyond the endometrium but there was no is no no symptoms there was no bleeding baby there is no pain but i i i just asked to, to and counsel the patient to go for the further evaluation and it turned out to be a placenta treta that was there after the the delivery so oh, that is again misleading because because a uh, patient did not have any of the clinical uh, finding in this case so oh, this all makes us very very confused so we must resort to some of the findings that that are more consistent with our practice and here come this paper published in rsna uh, the in 2015 that is a very comprehensive paper in which they dealt with the every aspect of the rpoc and if you have time you must go through there in the internet so so the diagnosis of rpoc is made either by the ultrasound or by the ct and the, and the mri in ultrasound we have a gray scale finding and we have color doppler finding during publication of this paper the authors went through different workers who were working all over the world over a period of the time over the topic of ultrasound and color doppler findings of rpoc and after going through all this paper seen here they have come to the conclusion that only two to three findings so that very much relevant in the given clinical context and that we must have kept in our mind while dealing with this patients so so one of the most important finding is the thickened endometrial eco complex this is a thickened irregular endometrium so exact definition of thickened varies in literature it ranges from 8 to 30 but few of the workers use 10 mm as a cut off in the clinically suspected patient and they have found that this has a specificity of more than 80% it is slightly lower lower uh, sensitivity just because of the fact because thickened eco endometrial eco complex can be observed in postpartum patient with no rpoc but if we have taken the clinical history uh, well then we might not miss our diagnosis the a second finding is the in, endometrial or intrauterine mass and it is any structure that is separate from the endometrium that is distinguishable in two orthogonal plane the sensitivity of 79% as and and the positive predictive value is as high as 80% 
in uh, color doppler color doppler is uh, uh, quite useful because compared with a clinical presentation alone color doppler ultrasound increases the likelihood of predicting rpoc by approximately a factor of 2 to better describe the typical color doppler ultrasound findings the degree of vascularity of the endometrial component can be compared with the myometrial vascularity in the same image section and can be typed or graded as a type 0 1 2 3 3 so what is this type 2 1 2 3 3 so first we should see here that in type 0 there is no vascularity in the decidual bacillus region in type 1 there is minimal vascularity in type 2 there is a mild vascularity and in type 3 there is a moderate vascularity so if we are uh, so so the type 0 is is defined as no detectable vascularity in a thickened endometrial echo complex or a mass type 1 is minimal vascularity less than that of the rpoc type 2 is moderate vascularity nearly equal in the endometrium and myometrium and type 3 is marked endometrial vascularity that is more than that of the normal myometrium in the same image section but i need to tell you that while doing the by putting the colored doppler box you must take one box that include both the myometrium as well as the endometrium so that you can compare the two at the same time So, so, and always compare the endometrial vascularity with myometrial vascularity for this typing or 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 a grading. So, how it happens? So, well, let's see. So, in this case, when we put the color Doppler, so we see hardly any vascularity in the in the endometrium. So, it is type zero vascularity. Similarly, in this case, when we put the Doppler, we saw there is a mild vascularity in the in the endometrium that is less than that of the myometrium. So this was type one vascularity. Here we are seeing the vascularity that is almost similar to that to that of the myometrium, and this is type two vascularity. Here we are seeing the moderate vascularity. So, so this is the type three vascularity, but whenever we must, whenever we see the moderate vascularity, we must take the peak systolic velocity. Why that I will deal in the coming slides. So, so why this typing or grading is so important? This typing or grading is important because the positive predictive value of type one vascularity is more than ninety percent, and in type two or three it is hundred percent. So, so whenever you are doing this uh, color doppler and typing it. then you are almost sure that you are dealing with the rpoc in the correct clinical perspective and it increases the diagnostic confidence and it help in direct clinical management of the rpoc so the so the uh, uh, our algorithm is that if there is a mass in endometrial cavity or a thickened endometrial uh, echo complex if we are seeing no flow then it either be blood clot or devascularized rpoc but if we are seeing the flow and if it is type 1 to 3 then it is most likely to be an rpoc ct and uh, mri has a role only in the long standing rpoc and in the in the clinical complexity of the case a confident diagnosis of rpoc can be made with either of these uh, modality if we are seeing an enhancing soft tissue mass within the endometrial uh, canal so why why this enhancement occur it enhancement occur because the vascularity is increased so it takes more of the contrast so we have an enhancing mass like this on ct scan or in in the uh, mri here we are seeing a quite defined nodular enhancing mass but we must remember that the pre contrast images must be seen to distinguish it from the blood clot both in the ct as well as the mri because because if we will see only the post contrast images we might miss this this the blood clots there are some differentials of uh, of uh, of written product also that we must remember and most important is the arterio venous malformation so believe me it is rare and over diagnosed and a line disease is often either rpoc or related to the sub involution of the placental implantation site 
The biggest pitfall in diagnosis is mistaking the marked vascularity of RPOC for an IVM, and most AVM develops secondary to uterine tissue injury from the prior, from the prior dilatation and curettage rather than congenital malformation. So, if your patient doesn't have a history of uh, prior DNC, and if you are seeing one mass with vascularity, the better is to write RPOC with moderate vascularity rather than AVM. But we do see AVM also in our practice. Like in this case, there was a marked vascularity and patient had history of 3 DNC. So we, we took the uh, BSV, so the, so the blood flow was quite high, it was uh, almost uh, 59 meter per second and there was a draining vein as well so it has to be uh, finally coagulated with the uterine artery embolization but most likely what we deal in our practice is rpoc with the moderate vascularity so, so the standard for avm diagnosis is angiographic identification of an early draining vein which may be seen in your color doctor and in color doctor vascular endometrial components seen in rpoc whereas endometrial avm is primarily involved only the myometry so we must when we put the color doctor so if there is a more of endometrial component so it is it is going for the RPOC, but if it has a myometrial component as well, then it goes in favor of AV malformation. Treatment options are uterine if, uh, is, is either the uterine artery embolization or expectant management with close monitoring. Endometrial polyps and some mucosal fibroid can also present as a, as a, as RPOC, but need to be deal with the deal with the uh, clinical uh, perspective. So, oh, 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 the here we are we are seeing very small lesion here. But when we put the color doctor, we are seeing it as a marked marked vascularity. So that was that was actually a vascular polyp. Again, one of the one of the most important uh, differential that is so rare is the is the, the sub involution of the placental implantation site, where the postpartum uterine vessels are failed to involute following the uh, delivery and we have a large and dilated myometrial vessels in the in the in the post uh, bottom uterus so uh, here we see the hypoechoic tortuous vessels along the inner third of the myometrium with or without tissue in the endometrial cavity so the hallmark is that endometrial cavity is empty but we are seeing hypoechoic tortuous vessels along the inner third of the myometrium so, so, so when we put the uh, pulse Doppler, we see the low resistance flow and the increased area of vascularity correlate with the placental Im implantation site in the in the uh, documented pre -deal. So here we are seeing seeing the sub involution of the of the, the of the uh, uh, uterus, where we are seeing the large cystic area in the myometrium and and the endometrial cavity is empty. And we are, when to, we are putting the color doctor, we are seeing the vessels in the myometrium and there is no vascularity in the endometrium. So the, so the hallmark is that there is no lesion in the endometrial cavity with pronounced vascularity in the myometrium. Invasive mole, we should always, always uh, remember to see the persistently elevated and increasing HCG levels. And it has a very typical appearance. That is a poorly de uh, defined mass with hypoechoic uh, area, cystic area that is located in, in the uterus. So we see increased vascularity, but that is more prominent in the myometrium resulting from the myometrial invasion. Like here we are seeing a typical cystic area in the in the endometrium, and vascularity is mostly confined in the in the myometrium. So management of uh, RPOC that can be expected management that can be surgical management dilatation and curettage has been gone out of window vacuum uh, uh, aspiration hysteroscopic removal and interventional radiology with uh, uterine artery embolization so in this paper that was that was published in 2006 16 in the abdominal imaging and again this paper taken into account most of the workers of the world working upon the management of the RPOC and what they have concluded in this latest paper that uh, if there is a high flow, 
then the surgery is likely. And if there is a no flow or no flow, then the expensive or medical management is is a uh, is a uh, useful in this cases, and surgery can be avoided. Uh, we do see RPOC in the cesarean patient. Patients are often surprised when we suggest RPOC after C-section, since the placenta is uh, directly visualized at the time of surgery. But RPOC can occur in this patient, and large amount are frequently due to the placenta accreta that may be undiagnosed before the delivery. So whenever there is an endometrial mass, we first measure it. Uh, then we see that whenever you are seeing the flow, you must measure the peak velocity to quantify it. Because seeing the flow on the color Doppler is very, very misleading. How? Let's see. So, so we are seeing a very good flow in the endometrium here. But when we put the, put the, uh, uh, the peak systolic uh, velocity, that is our, our gate, then we are seeing that the peak system velocity is only 7. So the vascularity is not that much. But uh, in this, in this again, we are seeing almost a similar vascularity on our Doppler gate. But but when we are putting the, the, the our gate for pulse Doppler, then the vascularity is in the, in the terms of 40 to 60 centimeter per second. And here we are seeing a draining vein here, and the pulse the Doppler shows a vascularity of 189 cm per second. But as far as vascularity is concerned, in all the three cases, by our naked eye, we can we can we can assume that there is a similar moderate kind of vascularity. So always, always, always quantify the vascularity, measure the PSV because it is important for the for the for the management. So if uh, the PSV is more than 60 cm per second, the chances of blood loss during the surgery is a bit high. And we, we, we diagnose the uh, acrita, incrita and percrita only when RPOC extends beyond the endometrium to the myometrium. And when we, we, we send for and uh, refer to the interventional neurology. We send refer when there is a severe bleeding refractory of, of the uterotonic drugs and uterine curator. And one golden rule is that if you will see a PSV more than 100 cm per second, please send this patient to the intervention. Uh, I I search to the management, but I won't go through the management in detail. Just a few words that I have discovered during this talk, like like in this in this guideline of uh, of uh, RCOG, they have uh, suggested that medical abortion can be given till till uh, nine weeks. That is that is uh, uh, less than less than nine weeks of of the, of the pregnancy. And they have a complete list of what to do and what not to do. You may go through it to know the know the management guidelines. So, oh, summary of this talk before the take-home messages are that first half of the pregnancy, elevated risk of RPOC, but also can occur after term delivery and cesarean section. The other golden rule is if it looks like a placenta, it is likely to be a placenta. Believe me. And color Doppler flow increases likelihood of RPOC. Absence of flow does not exclude RPOC, but in a small percentage of cases, we have avascular RPOC as well. High PSV is associated with bleeding at the time of DNC, so don't forget to assess the spectral Doppler. Avoid the term AVM because mention if RPOC with high PSV that might benefit UA, that is uterine artery embolization. And take home messages because I I believe that golden words must be repeated again and again that frequent endometrial eco complex intracavitary mass along with type one to three vascularity are the most important imaging findings in appropriate clinical settings. RPOC with moderate vascularity must be used more than AVM until you see a draining vein, and uh, along with vascularity, always measure PSV for your management. Thank you so much for all your uh, all your attention. Be safe. Thank you, Dr.